Hey everyone, James Nigemeyer here. Thank you for tuning back into my YouTube channel. Today I want to do a uh, quick spring fishing tip. This is uh, something that pertains to everybody that's fishing in the March, April, May time frame where guys are out there and everything looks right, yet you're not getting bit. This is a tip that I think will help you get some fish on those frustrating days. Before I get right into it, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and drop a comment down below. That's really the best way you can help me uh, grow this channel. And if you like the channel, uh, it's something that I would certainly appreciate it. Also, share it on your, uh, your social media cha channels or platforms, and um, that'll help gain some traction as well. So you're out there. It's March, April, May. The time you've been waiting for all through the winter months, maybe as far back as fall, you're excited about bass fishing. All the conditions are right. It's been warm it's been on an increased warming trend or a, a sustained warming trend and even the nights the lows in the evenings are not even getting uh, getting down very low maybe 60s uh maybe maybe as low as 50 but not enough to really knock that warm water down or back any during the evenings daytime temperatures are high 70s and maybe even in the 80s and it's not very windy uh, no cold fronts, everything is, is right. And then you get to the lake and it's overcast, kind of like we have today. You're out there and everything is pointing at the fishing being fantastic. Yet you're out there and you're not getting bites. You're not getting bites on your favorite spinnerbait, your bladed jig, your lipless crankbait, your square bills. Uh, all those baits, buzz baits, frogs, different things like that that you think, man, they, those fish, you know, the water temperature's in the 60s and you think those fish have to be there. The bite should be much better. You know, low light conditions, they should be ambushing prey. They should be just up there feeding. They got the, the feed, they should have the feed bag on like, uh, like we like to say when uh, those bass are up there chattering in the uh, shallows and stuff like that during the uh, typical months of March, April, May. Yet you're not getting bites. So what I would like to, um, to share with you guys is a quick tip on what to do when you're out on the water during this time, pr time frame, during this springtime period uh, that'll help you get some bites. It's something that's helped me and really I feel like it's going to help you no matter where you live in the country. It'll kind of turn one of those uh, tougher days when you're throwing those more horizontal type baits or power fishing type baits or moving type bait, reactionary type baits, and you're just not getting the bites you'd like. So here it is. Without further ado, I, when I'm faced with that, a lot of times what I've found is those fish are up there and they may just be in that warmer water, soaking up that warmer water, but they're not really bedding. Yeah, sure, some of them, some of them are bedding, but... Um, a lot of times they're moving up out of that deeper water and they're just kind of soaking up that warmth and they're you know they've been lethargic and they're starting to get to a place where they're getting more aggressive or their metabolism is is increasing but they're just not chasing those baits like you'd like them to and you know this period might last for four or five days it might last for a week or so but basically those fish don't want to chase that horizontal moving bait for some reason, those, those types of presentations just don't get it for them. And when I'm faced with that, one of the things that I like to do is just take a light Texas rig. And I say light, it could be heavy. You could, this right here, I've got this 20 pound test, gamma fluorocarbon, and I've got it on a 7.6 uh, heavy action flipping stick. And that could vary down to 12 pound test, depending on the water clarity and the cover and the size fish you have in that particular body you're fishing. But basically what I'm doing is I'm taking just a small creature bait, like a uh, Yamamoto flapping hog, and I'm putting it on a, a light weight, maybe a quarter or a 3 16th ounce uh, tungsten. It could be a lead weight, really doesn't matter. And I like to peg it. Um, I'm putting it on a uh, owner. This is their... Uh, heavy cover or um, the jungle wide gap flipping hook right there. I believe that's the four aught size and the smaller flapping hog. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking that bait and pitching it around any 
uh, any targets where a bass might be laying up there, sitting up there, and getting ready to ambush a, a prey item, um, you know, relating to cover. So it might be a weed edge, it might be just a single stick, it might be a stump, it might be a dark spot where you know you have kind of sandy areas and there's just a, a little bit of a dark stop, spot there. It could be a place where you think fish would like to bed, but they're maybe not bedding, maybe they are bedding. But basically I'm just taking this lightweight Texas rig, this little creature bait, and it'll work with a craw. It will even work with a Yamamoto Senko. A lot of people really don't like to throw the Yamamoto Senko with a weight because they're like, that just defeats the purpose. I can't get that through my head that they like to eat this thing with a weight on it because of that shimmy is where all the action is. But believe me, they will straight smoke a Yamamoto Senko Texas rig with a lightweight. 3 16 quarter ounce, 5 16 something like that. I wouldn't go too much heavier than that, but I'm basically just pitching it around any kind of shallow cover, shallow target, and just as you go down the bank, just pitching at different likely looking spots, uh, like I said, weed clumps, uh, wood, little rocky point, boat docks, boat pilings, um, different things like that, even just a buoy that's just kind of right there, but anything in the shallows. And one of the things that I think makes this good is the fact that when it falls, it falls vertically, where again, those power fishing type baits, you're moving them through the water in that horizontal fashion and that vertical fall, that descent that goes, it drops down right in front of those fish is something that helps them react. It's a, some, I don't know if it helps them react. It's something they react to better on certain days than others. It's uh, a lot of people don't want to, don't really boil it down to, well, a horizontal presentation versus a vertical presentation, but there are times when just the difference in the way that uh, a bait moves through the water column can make a big difference in the number of bites you get. Sometimes it's just because those fish don't have a large strike window, they have a, a narrow strike window, and so pitching that in and around and, and short casting it and even flipping it around these places, getting right close, right up into their mailbox, right up into their grill, you're gonna get some bites where you may not have otherwise. Um, again, just uh, vary your line size, vary your uh, rod type based on your cover. And as far as colors, uh, I've got watermelon red here. This is a great stained water color. I even dipped the tails a little bit. It's kind of faded back out, but you might hit that with chartreuse. Um, but watermelon red is a great kind of stained water color. Green pumpkin is obviously great for clear waters. And then a black and blue for uh, darker uh, water or more stained water or darker or overcast days or even rainy days. But that's my tip for you guys. Something to think about when everything is as it should be and you should be getting bit and you're not. This is a great uh, you know, answer to the uh, equation or to figure out the puzzle when you're out there springtime bass fishing and they're just not eating your power fishing or moving type baits like you'd like them to. That's it for now, guys. Quick video, just the answer to the question, what do I gotta do to get those fish to bite when all the conditions are right and they're not biting? Thanks for tuning into my YouTube channel and until next time, good fishing. That's the deal. Lightweight little creature bait, a little Yamamoto flapping hog. 3 16 to quarter ounce, in and around any kind of cover. Nice chunker.